Good morning, USW. Everybody, everybody's week is off to a good start. We're now, like seven days into the first semester, it's off and rolling. Everybody having a good time so far? Raise your hand if your season is off to a great start. What's the What's the next game coming up on USW's campus? Soccer? Girls soccer today. Tomorrow. Maybe we can lift that up in frame. Let's go ahead and rise as we are able. And let's march with the song. Can we turn up my microphone just a little bit? Amazing. 
Father, we don't want to take that for granted. And uh, God, that grace is free to us, but it came at the cost of your own son. We don't want to take that lightly. God, we don't want to just sing this as though they're just words on the screen. We want to realize that there is something truly amazing about the grace of God Almighty, that he would send your very son to this earth to die for us so that we could have eternal life. And for those that have tasted and seen that, they know how amazing it is. And we know that this is something to sing and worship you for. But Father, we realize that there might be some here this morning that don't know that amazing grace. And my prayer is that they would. That they would not leave this place until they do. Father, we just thank you for this time of worship as we take a break from our studies, our teaching, and all these things. And we gather around the throne of grace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all go ahead and have a seat. Hey, it's my, uh, it's my privilege to uh, welcome you guys to chapel. Thank you so very much for being here. Glad that you are. And it's also my privilege to introduce to you our speaker for today. Um, you may not have seen him before. I had not seen him before until today, uh, but I have heard him before. And it's a name that you might know. Uh, his name is Steve Salcida. And he is the director of workforce training at New Mexico Junior College across the street here in Hobbs. And he's been with them for about nine years. Uh, before that, before he worked for the JC, he actually worked here at USW as director of alumni services. And uh, he also, he's actually an alumni from here at USW. He uh, graduated with an associate of arts from the JC, a bachelor's of business administration here from USW, and also did his MBA from Eastern New Mexico University. Currently, he's the vice president of the United Way board. He's actually on all kinds of boards throughout this area. He's a great community servant here. Uh, he was featured on the cover of Permian Basin Oil and Gas Magazine for leading the JC to the number one ranking in workforce training. The guy is very gifted in what he does. Uh, he is a fantastic speaker. He is, actually has his own radio show called Untucked with Steve Salcida. That's available on iTunes and also uh, listen to it on the radio. So would you join me in welcoming Mr. Steve Salcida? Thank you. Welcome, guys. Well, you always make yourself sound good when you write your own bio, right? So listen, I understand that some of you are here by choice and some of you are here by choice. Force. Who is forced to come to chapel? Can I see your hands? A couple of hands up, and the rest of you are here by choice. So listen, we're going to, for those of you, the rest of you were lying. Some of you had to be here, and that's okay. So what we want to do for about the next 15 minutes or so, I just need about 15 minutes of your time, is to just visit with you for a little bit. Like uh, our speaker just said, I am a proud graduate of U University of the Southwest. Before that, it was actually College of the Southwest, before it even became and it died. <laughs> Check. Can you guys still hear me? Boom. Oh, there we go. Battery's done. Actually, I'm going to give this to you. That way it doesn't die on me. I'm sure you can. you guys still hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, no, great. So if not, I will yell. I'm just kidding. I won't do that. But listen, I am a proud graduate of here. I graduated in 2003. And then I worked here for almost three years as the alumni director and then the annual fund. If you've ever been in the student center, you're welcome. I help raise money for that. So that was something that I thoroughly enjoyed doing, enjoyed my time here, and then have jumped across the street. 
Listen, um, I've been doing this since I was 12 years old, and I'm about to be 35, so you can do the math. I stood in front of my first prep when I was 12, and I've uh, been doing it ever since. And so, hopefully for the next few moments, we can have a little bit of fun together. So, in order for this to work, you and I are going to have to interact a little bit. Now, here's a show of hands. If your coach is in here, just look straight ahead and don't give me any details. How many of you guys have ever done something that you're not proud of? If your hand ain't up, you lie about other things, okay? <laughs> Next question I have for you. How many of you have done something in your life that you promised yourself or somebody else that you would never do? Been there. Been there. Well, let's bring it into the 21st century. How many of you have ever gone on a social media rant about someone or something and gave a passive aggressive post that you were throwing shade at somebody and that shade you were throwing, you went and did that yourself sometime later? Mm -hmm. You're like, dude, you been reading my Facebook? No, man. It just means this is what we do. And here's the truth of the matter. Is anyone from Lee County in here? Like, you live in Lee County, and you're going to school here, you work here, okay? Anyone here from the East Coast has come as far as the East Coast? Where are you from? Where? From Boston, Mass. Anyone from the West Coast? Where? Seattle, Washington. Seahawks fan? That's what's up, bro. Nice. Any internationals in the room today? Anyone from outside of the United States of America? Where are you from? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Nice. Anybody else from, that's willing to admit it? Where are you from? Same place? Same place. So listen, some of you guys are far away from home. Some of you are like, I cannot get out of this place. But regardless of what it is, some of you are here by choice, some of you are here by force, and we have all admitted as adults and as students that we've all done things that we're not proud of. We've all done things that we are not proud of at all, that we promised ourselves, I will never do this. I told myself I'd never go out with a girl like this. And there you are, two years later, because you're afraid to break up with her because she's going to light you on fire. Okay? <laughs> like, bro, she's scary. She's scary. Or maybe you've done something. Maybe you've dabbled in some substances that maybe are legal or illegal. Again, look straight ahead and no one from administration will know that we're talking about you. Okay? Whatever it is. Maybe you, maybe you lifted something from a store. I don't really care what it is. But we've all done those things. And some of you are far away from home. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand on this because I don't want to embarrass you. But let's just be honest. Some of us get a little homesick when we're away from someplace. We text home, we call home, and that, as soon as that fall break comes up, you want a bus, you want a car, you want a plane, and you're going home. And it's hard. It's hard for you to be in a place from Seattle, Washington, to the middle of the desert. Was it culture shock, bro? Is it still culture shock? Where you can just see for miles on end with no mountains around here? It's different. From where you came from to where you are now, it's so different. And one of the things that I want to talk to you about this morning is this idea of self-worth. And let's just be honest with ourselves. There are things that we've done, things that have been done to us, and things that we are involved in that we're not super proud of. There are certain things that we would rather not put on Facebook. There are certain things we would never snap to somebody else for fear that they're going to be a screenshot about something. We've all got those things about ourselves. Maybe if you're in here, you had bad relationships. And you don't want nobody to know how many times you've been married. Or maybe you've been in an abusive situation. Whatever the case might be, life gets real. And oftentimes you hear this, you got to forgive yourself, right? You got to move on. You got to start doing this. And isn't it amazing how people are willing and ready to remind us of the things that we've done wrong? You ever had that happen before? You got someone in your world, you're talking about certain things, and you're like, man, I don't want to talk about it anymore. So if you've ever had an argument, it's either the 9 millimeter approach or the shotgun approach. Let me tell you what I mean by that. If, you ever, if you're in a relationship, or maybe you got a good friend, maybe you got a family member, look, every family member fights, right? You might think that your family is crazy, look around. You got a room full of crazy families, okay? Everybody's family's crazy. Y'all got that one aunt and uncle that nobody wants to claim. You know what I'm saying? They're all crazy. But have you ever noticed that when you get into an argument, that you can have something where you're having like 
a direct argument about whatever it is, or sometimes you have the shotgun approach. Let's say you're with a significant other, and they are, you are just upset that they won't pick up their nasty drawers from up that floor, and they'll be like, dude, pick up after yourself. I ain't your mama, right? And then you get into an argument, and then the shotgun approach is this. They start bringing stuff up from 12 years ago about that one time that they took the last jelly donut, and they still mad about it. And you're kind of like, what in the world does this have to do with anything? Like, you can't even focus on what's going on. And then it starts to deal with issues of our self-worth when we start feeling guilty about the things that we've done that nobody else knows about. All right? Now, I brought a gift with me today. This is for real. I stopped by the bank. I got a $20 bill that I'm going to give away here in just a few minutes. All right? It's for real. It's not fake. It's the same fake, all right? This is Andrew Jackson right here. Who in this room of about 100 of you would want this $20 bill right now? Again, if your hand ain't up, you lie about other things. Administrators, you better put your hands up. I used to work here. I know what y'all get paid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So how many of y'all would take this right now? Brand new, nothing wrong with it. Okay? Let me ask you something else. This is brand new. Oh, I'll still take it. <laughs> would you still take this? How many of you would still take this $20 bill? Hang on. Say it again. Tape is a magical healer. Would you still take this? How about this middle group? Would you still take this $20 bill? Y'all girls like, I'm hungry, dude. The sooner you shut up, I'm gonna go to Roses and buy the left side of the menu. <laughs> How about this side? Would y'all take this $20 bill right here? I can't watch this. <laughs> you still want it? Still want it? Now listen, I just walked up here through some mud. Would you still take this? It's dirty. Don't matter, right? So isn't it interesting? You would still want this because an authority higher than you and I placed a value on this. That no matter what has happened to it, been beaten up, heartbroken, ripped apart, the value has not changed. You may have started out your semester or your life clean as anything, and you got torn apart. You got crushed. You got stepped on. You got beat down on, but your creator and the God above placed a value on you that has never changed. Amen. Has never, ever changed. The things that you've done, things that have been done to you, things that you have been a part, did not change your value. But Steve, I promised myself I would never do this. I would never do that. And I did it anyways. And you beat yourself up over it. And the people around you remind you of it. Your conscience reminds you of it. But I came this morning to remind you that your value as an individual has not changed. That there is a God bigger than your actions and the circumstances that surrounded those actions. Because I believe in a God of grace and mercy. I don't believe in a God of second chance. I believe in a God of the 567th chance. That when everyone else has given up on you, he hasn't. When you feel like a throwaway, he's like, nope, that's my boy. That's my girl right there. I created them. I gave them purpose. I gave them meaning. I gave them value. Now, the funny thing about this $20 bill is you have no idea where it came from. I told you it came from the bank, but is there any idea what perhaps this $20 bill could have been used for? We don't know. Could have been a meth deal. Could have been used to fund terrorism. Could have been a bribe. Do you care what it was used for? Not really. Why? Because the value has not changed. Your value has not changed despite what you have done in your life. Your value does not change despite what may have been done to you in your life. Now you might be like, Steve, this is a free country. I can say what I want. I can do what I want. you absolutely right. But always remember, you are free to choose, but you are not free from the consequences of those actions. Ask Colin Kaepernick. 
It's all kinds of stuff going on there. But today I came just to bring you a very simple message. Maybe this is you. You feel crumpled up. You feel beat down. You feel stepped on. Your heart has been torn apart. But no matter what, you go to the bank, they're going to honor this because an authority higher than you or I place value on this $20 bill that no matter what happens, your value remains the same. Some of you are going through a season right now. Now listen, if you've lived in Lee County long enough, we're supposed to have four seasons in the year. In Lee County, we have two. We have extreme heat or we have extreme cold. Or as the case of Sunday night, about eight inches of rain in an hour and a half. But in every season of life, I want you to imagine something. Wherever you're from, in this great country or from around the world, in the wintertime, you wear winter clothes. Put on your North Face, put on your Columbia jacket, put, put your hoodies on, put your sweats on. And it works because that's the season for it. But what happens in Hobbs, New Mexico between June and August, if you lived here during the summer, what is the temperature like in Lee County between June and August? Friggin' hot. Between 95 and 108 on any given day. How would you feel walking around with your thick jacket and your hoodie and your sweats in the middle of July? You gonna be uncomfortable? I think so. I think you would, you know why? Because that clothing is not in the right season for it. And this is where I want to end our discussion for today. I'm, yes, I'm not even forgotten, I'm still gonna give it away. Don't be rushing the stage and tackling me, okay? That's just rude. <laughs> when you're talking about seasons, guys, there are gonna be people in your life that play a part for a season. And then after that, the season is over. If you are anything like me back when I was younger, I always used to, I wanna, used to wanna hang on to those friends because I always wanted to remember the good times. Remember how it used to be? Remember how it used to be? Until someone looked at me and said, but it ain't like that no more. And then it hurts because you're like, well, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Can I tell you something that might set some of you free this morning? You didn't do anything wrong. It's just that the season has passed. That person, that relationship that was good for you in that season is no longer good for you now. You will never know what God has for you until you're willing to let go of the past. But man, we had such good times and then he turned into a crazy psycho. Let it go. Let that relationship go. Let that friendship go. Does that mean that they did something wrong? Not necessarily. Does that mean you did something wrong? Not necessarily. What it means is the season is over. During the summer, you wear summer clothes. In the winter, you wear winter clothes. Do not go out in the middle of a storm in your spaghetti straps, short shorts, and flip-flops. You are going to die of hypothermia. It's not the season for it. So you got to start asking yourself, what season of life am I in? You guys are in college. You ain't in high school anymore. You hate being talked to like kids. Now, I'm not going to talk to you like no kid. I'm going to talk to you like an adult. you got to do a check for yourself. Who in my world needs to be here now? Who needs to be in this season? And who doesn't need to be in this season? Because the only person who's going to hold you back is you. As far as your value goes, you will start to lose yourself in staying in the wrong season because that person, if it's not good for you, they remind you of all the bad stuff that you did. They remind you of how you used to be. Sometimes you may go to your mom or your grandma and be like, I changed. Your grandma will be like, don't you lie to me, boy, I will beat you. Or whatever the case is, we always want to tell people that we've changed. Do you know what the best apology is to anybody? Change behavior. Don't tell them you're sorry. Act different. It's almost what's going off. But that's okay. So listen, Jesus is calling. Who still wants this $20 bill right here? My man right here. Yes, yes, sir. You're very welcome. Where are you from? Dallas, Texas? That's what's up, man. So listen, would you mind if I pray over you really quick? I didn't want to talk too long, so let's pray real quick. Just if you bow your heads and close your eyes with me in a moment of privacy and concentration. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you for this time. Father, I thank you for every single young person and adult that is here today. 
Father, I don't believe in accidents and luck or chance, but I believe that you are a God of divine appointment. Father, I thank you that they were encouraged this morning to remember that no matter what they've done, where they've been, or what's been done to them, that their value in your eyes does never diminish. That you accept them, that you love them, that you are with them always. And Father, we thank you that the season that they are in, I thank you that by your precious Holy Spirit, you give them the strength to make the decisions that they need to fully step into the season that you have for them. This has been such a privilege, Father, and I honor you and I thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for your attention. All right. Hey, thank you all so much for being here. If you are taking this for class, be sure to sign in, and I do need signatures. Not check marks, not smiling faces, signatures. FCA is Monday nights, and the Hob is Thursday night. Hope you can make those.